So this video, we're going to be talking about the cash flow statement. Cash flow statements are very similar to the overall number that you see on your bank account. When you go to an ATM, they usually print out a little receipt that says something along the lines of, you have so much money in your bank account. A cash flow statement's very similar, but it's done on a company-wide basis, and it's split up into three categories. You have operations, you have investing, you have financing. If you receive negative cash inflows, these numbers can be negative or positive. If you have a negative cash outflow of money from operations, that's really bad. That's not uh, something you typically want to see on a cash flow statement. And if this number is negative, that is that is a telltale sign that this is not a place where you want to park your money. Cash flow investing and cash flow uh, from financing are a little bit different. Whenever you actually purchase stock or you actually purchase real estate, you can have a cash outflow because you actually had to spend money up front to buy it. And the same goes for financing, but both of these numbers can be negative because a lot of times you spend money on things like equipment, you spend things on uh, things like real estate, and also you have to spend money on all of this financing for all of your real estate. So that's also included in there. But let's go ahead. This is going to be our last actual document before we move on to other parts of our app. And this is going to be relatively painless. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to go into my sidebar right here. And I'm going to copy and paste this. We'll go down. We're going to say cash flow statement. Then we're going to give this cash flow statement right here. So cash flow statement, that looks great. And I don't know why I clicked on that. That was an accident. Okay, so now we need to actually make the route. The route doesn't even exist. And we're going to go into here, copy and paste this down. Something happened there. Um, need to just re-copy and paste that and going to go into here. So we'll say cash flow statement. And we will go ahead and we will make this, although this doesn't actually exist yet. So we need to make it. Okay, and that is a file. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go into here and I need to create a folder for our cash flow statement. So I'll say cash flow statement. And as always, we create a file. And I'm gonna make sure that F is capitalized because I think it makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so go down here, make sure the F is capitalized. It's kind of random. I don't know why I zoomed in on that. So go to here, T-S-R-A-F-C-E. We're going to get rid of these divs. Now what we need to do is we need to bring in our config. So in order to actually get the config, I highly, highly recommend that you do not actually type any of this out. But if you go to the link I'm about to drop down below, you will see the cash flow statement and you won't have to type out the config. So I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the config. I'm just going to grab this. Feel free to add to this if you want to. These are going to be the labels for our table. And I'm going to go ahead, copy and paste this to the top. So go into here add import from company and we will go down here and this is where we're going to go get the ticker and then we're going to actually create the table we've done this a million times this is going to be super easy so we go into here and say const ticker and then we're going to say use outlet context go ahead bring that in our auto import is working today so that is Pause for celebration. <laughs> okay. We're also going to set the cash flow, of course. And we're going to use our state. And the state is going to be an array of company cash flows. This app is looking good. No lie. I'm not even trying to pump anybody up. This app is looking really great. Okay. I love these names. The company cash flow type. Okay. We're going to go into here. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to do the use effect. 
and the use effect is going to execute a function that is going to go get our actual cash flows. And I forgot that we don't actually uh, have the cash flows yet. We have the type, but we don't have the actual get cash flow function right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into here. I'm going to actually make it. And another thing is that we still need to wire up the route. So I'm going to go back to the route. Don't forget this part and go back in here. Then I'm going to go back to my API, create the API endpoint, and it'll be super easy because they look just like every other API endpoint that we have. Go into here and we'll change this to cash flow. I'm going to call this statement. I think that that is probably a more get cash flow statement. Make sure that F is capitalized. Go into here, get that company cash flow. And we need to go to financial modeling prep and get the cash flow statement. And the cash flow statement is going to be right here. And if you don't want to even type it all out, you can just go into here and type in uh, cash flow statement. Very similar. And that should work, hopefully. But if it doesn't, we'll figure it out later. All right. So we're going into here. We're going to get the cash flow statement. We need to wrap this in an async, otherwise we're not going to be able to use that await. And also remember this, you can't just toss an async up in there. It's not going to allow you to do that. That's not uh, actual valid. That's not valid React. So we need to go down here uh, and actually create the async function. We'll say const fetch cash flow. And this is just a function so that we can wrap this around. Does it, it's not incredibly it's not an incredibly mission critical function so if you name it something a little crazy it's not going to really hurt anybody so go down in here and we'll say set the cash flow and we'll toss in the result and the result um, because we're actually putting in an array it's not going to be this in some of our components it's that because we're just passing in one single part of the array one single part of the object but because we want the whole entire thing and we want to see all the cash flows we're going to go ahead and do that and also remember to put your string there otherwise this is not going to work and also do not forget this and do not forget this so we'll say fetch cash flow and this is looking great. And go down here. We've got our config. We've got our data. Now all that we need to do is make a ternary. I think that probably the best thing to do right now would be to make a ternary operator to check if we actually have that data back from the API. And if we have it, we'll display the table. So some good conditional rendering. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. Okay. So... Next, we're going to bring in the data and we're going to say cash flow data. And that looks good. Go ahead, control dot, bring in our table. Um, put a colon right here. We're going to go down and we're going to say no results. And in the next video, we will be doing the loading spinner. So we're going to replace all these with loading spinners in the next video. And trust me, it's going to look absolutely amazing. Okay, so... I'm thinking that that is it. So what I'm going to do is just fire it up. Actually, it's already working. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up, see what it looks like. And it, what, a, what an amazing app. So we'll go into here. We'll toss in Microsoft. We'll see what Microsoft... Oh my gosh, look at this. Income, balance, cash flow. Look at that beautiful cash flow. That is a beautiful cash flow statement. But... One other thing is, I think it might be a good thing to go ahead and add a couple tiles up here. I think a lot of these tiles look a little lackluster. We could put maybe a price. We could put some. We could put the sector up here. I think we should put some tiles up here so while we're up here to make things just look a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my company page right here. So we'll go company page, and we'll go down here. We'll copy and paste a couple tiles. And I'm going to add, let's see here. I'm going to add the price. I think the price, I'm not a big price guy. I try not to look at the price. I think you should always value the company by the actual balance sheet. But sometimes it is nice to have a little bit of price action going on. So we'll say price. And this needs to be a two strings. And we'll give this a two string. 
and that'll give us the price. Next, let's do sector. I think sector is another very important uh, tile that we should have here. Whenever you're looking at stocks, a different, a, a different sector is a, pretty much a whole entire different beast. So let's go also put a sector. And one thing that we could also do is let's be a little crazy. Let's put in a uh, P tag. We'll go class name. And we'll say background white shadow. We'll give it rounded just to make this look a little bit better. And we'll say text gray. Make it look similar to the rest of our app. We'll go 900. We'll give it some padding three. Uh, margin top one. We'll go margin all around four. And then what we're going to do is pass in a description. So, and this is going to help you tremendously when you're actually looking at stuff because it'll tell you basically what it is. So we're going to say description and that looks great. Then also let's do, let's add another tile so we can get four up there so that it looks very uniform and feel free to put whatever you want to in here, but I'm a discounted cash flow kind of guy. I think it's great. It's a little academic. I think discounted cash flow is a little academic, but it's still a very useful indicator in itself. And let's go into here. And let's check out, let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go into here and go back in. So let's go ahead, toss in Microsoft as usual. Microsoft is a great corporation and Microsoft Corporation develops licenses. We now have a price. Also, one other thing, let's go back and change all of these uh, values down here in this list so that when we click them or when we add them to our portfolio, it will take us to the company profile as opposed to taking us directly to MSFT like it is like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back and let's check out the card list. So let's go to the card list. Let's see here. I'm gonna to go to the actual card, go into here, and I'm going to change this to company and we'll say company row file and that's great and then the next thing that we need to find is the portfolio list so we're going to go here we're going to go into our portfolio portfolio list we got card portfolio we've got our link right here and we're going to say company profile so that it will now take us to directly to our company profile instead of taking us, like I said, to the blank page that we had before. So let's go back, see what Microsoft's up to, go into Microsoft. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. That actually is a very nice dashboard. Uh, maybe we could change these home symbols right here, but that'd take like a second. Okay, and then we also need to check to make sure that the portfolio is working. So we're gonna go to our port. Oh my gosh, look at that. Beautiful app. Anyways, after this, we're doing loading spinners and we have a couple more features after this. Hopefully, hope you guys like this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.